Hi everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades, and today we're gonna be talking about how to build momentum in a financing round. So let's face it, sense of urgency, that fear of missing out, is ultimately what pushes the investors to get in and really invest in your business. Without that, when they see that the train is stuck, that the train is not leaving the station, it's gonna be very difficult for them to give you a check and to really invest in your business. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing is to get your data in order. Before you're even getting out there, speaking with investors, you wanna really understand you know, your numbers, your data around maybe like the competition, maybe there, there's some numbers around the competition, the data on your own market, perhaps the market size, how the market is growing. So you need to have all that data already in place in your head memorized, because for sure the investor is going to ask you about it. Now here's the tip, if you go into the meeting and there is a certain question that the investor is asking you that you don't really understand or you don't really know, don't make it up. Just say, thank you, if it's okay, I'll follow up with you later. And basically after that meeting, later in the day, you send a thank you note and you say, by the way, that to your question, here is the answer. Never make it up, never uh, lie, because that's all going to come out on the disclosure schedules when you're going to due diligence and that it's going to be a reason for the investor to pull out of the deal. So really get your data and understand your numbers. The next thing is you really need to constantly be polishing your pitch deck. A pitch deck is never a final and complete document. It's always a work in progress. And by the way, you can actually download the pitch deck template below, which uh, you can get for free and that founders have used to raise millions all around the world. And again, you know, this pitch deck is gonna be 15 to 20 slides. On every single meeting, there's gonna be new things that are gonna be popping up. Perhaps there is certain holes that you didn't know were there. So that's why it's key to listen because ultimately those questions that you receive, let's say on meeting number five or meeting number six, you're gonna see that are starting to repeat. So that's why you wanna iterate and you wanna optimize your deck and you wanna continue to, to polish it as you go so that you can really nail it for subsequent round, for subsequent meetings when you're speaking with other investors. You also want to do a ton of research, either with investors that you're already in discussions with or with investors that you're about to have discussions with. So for example, with the ones that you've already had discussions, you know, maybe you, you're doing your research, maybe you have your Google uh, alerts, uh, your Google news alerts when they do a new financing or anything else that perhaps could impact your own round, or maybe like something that is a, an update, you know, on how well they're doing. Maybe it's a good way for you to stay on top and to either send them a thank you or perhaps to use that information that you're getting as a way to perhaps polish more the way that you're engaging with that investor. On the other end, with the new investors that you're gonna be reaching or that you're gonna be meeting with, you want to have done your research or maybe the articles that they're tweeting about, the groups that they've joined on LinkedIn, so that when you arrive to the call, you have done your homework. You really know, even though you've never met that investor, you've already done the research to a point where it could be as you've known them all, your, all their life. You know, if they've published a book, you want to read that book. If they've done like a ton of blog posts, maybe you want to read the ones that have the most uh, amount of popularity on the internet. So you want to arrive to those meetings and also do those engagements with certain information that is going to give you an advantage and an edge towards everyone else in order to really understand how you handle the communication. The next thing is you really want to know the investor. And obviously at the beginning when you haven't had that much of an exchange, one of the tactics that you can use is you can go out to founders that have already received an investment from that specific investor and not only use those to receive an introduction, but then also use those founders to ask them how the investor is. You know, maybe there's like certain stories that they can share with you. And ultimately those stories and that information that they give you is certain info that is going to help you understand if one, if that's an investor that you wanna have involved in your business, but then also an investor that perhaps you want to uh, perhaps handle or approach in a different way that perhaps you didn't know you could. So that's a good 
tool that you can use, again, founders of portfolio companies, and ideally those founders that are working at a board level and that have a very tight relationship with that investor that you're looking to target. The next thing is really you wanna start early. The biggest mistake that I make founders making is that they wait until the six month mark when they are about to run out of money and then they go out and they try to find the investors. The problem is that time is of the essence. The more time, the more leverage that you have. So what I would recommend that you do is, even if you're not raising money today, you're already building the relationship with that specific investor that you may be reaching out to in the next 12 to 14 to 18 months, whatever that amount is, but you're doing it ahead of time so that they get comfortable with you, so that they get to know you, and also they get to know your business. So that way, when you actually need them, it's just one phone call away rather than having to start everything from the ground up. So start early, as early as literally having an idea on a napkin. Next thing is really taking commitments. So look, there's gonna be investors that are not gonna be lead investors. Maybe it's not that person that is, or institution that is coming in, is pricing the round for everyone else to come. One thing that you could do is, even with the people that you're speaking with, maybe you can ask them, hey, would you be willing to put a commitment? Would you be willing to commit to making a certain amount of investment and what would that be? And essentially with that, you're already creating some type of storm, some type of snowball effect where essentially you can leverage that potential commitment, especially if it's a good name, a big name in the space that perhaps is signaling to others so that for further discussions, you can say, by the way, investor, whatever the name is, has already made a, commit a commitment of this amount and we are going to move very quickly uh, as soon as we get the lead investor. And that's a good way to really get things, uh, to get a kickstart and to really push them into that fear of missing out state, which is really what essentially is going to push investors to go over the edge. Then you wanna start low and go high. And what this means is that rather than, for example, if, you're, if you need to raise five million and you're not sure if you're gonna be able to raise the five million, maybe you go for that amount that you know for sure from relationships that you already have that they're gonna come in and invest in the business. So for example, if you think that two million is gonna be a for sure amount that you can raise, go out and don't say that you're going for five million. Like we said earlier, just say, I'm going to be raising two million or maybe two to five million. And that way, if you fall short and you don't hit the five million, you're not sending a negative signal to the market where people are gonna go, hold on, you know, he, he or she didn't raise the money. Perhaps there's something off with this business. It's all about signaling and it's going to give that psychological uh, kind of like message to the market that you've reached your target very early and that you got the money that you need in order to execute and that you're not falling short. Another great method to build momentum is to offer discounts. So basically what this means is that if you see an investor that could be a very well-regarded investor or a popular investor and perhaps send a very positive signal to the market, one thing that you could do is to offer them perhaps a convertible note with a certain amount of discount and interest on their investment if they were to help you in really structuring the equity round later on. Maybe there's an equity round that is happening in three, six or 12 months, but for that investor perhaps it makes total sense to jump in now so that they get to benefit from that discount and they also help you in really forming the entire round by making the right introductions and then also by guiding you into structuring it the right way. Next, you really want to use carefully that moment when you announce who your lead investor is, meaning who that investor that is coming in and investing 20% or more of your financing round because that is going to send a super powerful message to the market if it's a well-regarded investor or it may scare investors out if perhaps that investor is, is someone that people are not that familiar with. So again, you know, here you want to not treat this lightly. You want to make sure that the moment that you announce that is that moment where you've already built meaningful relationships with those investors that you really want to push over the edge that perhaps are followers because ultimately when it comes to fundraising, investors are like sheeps they follow other investors. They typically don't wanna take the lead. They don't wanna be the first ones that put a price tag on the round. And that's why you're never, for the most part, are going to hear the word 
no for in, from investors because they want to leave that door open just in case your deal gets traction. So with that being said, wait for that lead to come in. Again, always go for feedback. Never say that you're raising money. And once one of those people that you're engaging and receiving feedback from, they say, hey, are you looking to raise money? At that point, you give them that little push to become the lead investor and to go to the other ones that have been giving you feedback to tell them that a round has started and that if they would like to receive the offering documents and perhaps also that will lead to them wiring the money in the bank. And that's how you also use that as a way to show progress, as a way to really drive that sense of urgency and to really get people to really want to jump in. You also want to pack in the meetings. The last thing that you want is to have the emails, the communication all over the place. This is like a sales process. It's on that sales funnel that you have created. You have different stages that you're going to pass those investors from A all the way to C, and you want to have them all in the same stage all at the same time because that's also going to give you a great boost of confidence because you know that there's going to be other options in the event that that investor doesn't come in. And then also in many instances, that is going to show up even though you're not realizing that. Be, people are really going to know because the, the venture world is quite small. They're going to know that you are meeting with other investors, maybe that they are sitting on another board uh, or things like that. So that confidence is going to come across. Perhaps they're even going to ask you who else you're speaking with. So again, those are things that you can use to really leverage and to continue pushing them to really think that they're going to miss their seat. And if they don't jump in now, they're either going to lose their ticket or that ticket is going to be more expensive. Then remember, you want to really send powerful updates. Fundraising is not about that first meeting that you have where you're pitching them because you're never going to receive a check on that first day. You need to follow up as time goes on every couple of weeks until you have that lead investor that is pushing everyone over the edge. During those follow-ups, those powerful updates that you're using, you want to talk about those great milestones that you're accomplishing, those team members that you're adding in, those uh, perhaps uh, milestones that all of a sudden, you know, they're happening with press mentions that are putting you all over the place, you know, in a very good light. Uh, and again, I find that those updates is going to tell the investor that you're essentially delivering on the promises that you made to them during those first days where you were meeting. And that's going to give that sense of trust too in that relationship building that is super critical for them to really jump in and make an investment in your business. Lastly, you can use a countdown, but the countdown, you want to be very careful how you use it. Never use a countdown unless you have over 20% of the round already covered, meaning 20% of that round that you know that for sure is going to come to your bank account. And again, this is when you have a lead investor. This happens essentially when you reach out to all the other people that you have been in communication after having your lead investor and you tell them that the round is going to be closing by X date and that either they're in or they're out. And at that point, you know, you're really pushing them over the edge. And if that doesn't do it, then they were not a good investor in any case. So with that being said, hopefully you like this video. Make sure that you click the like button below. Also, make sure that you leave a comment and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the new videos that we're rolling out every week. And don't forget to take a look as well at the fundraising training, which is the program where we help founders all the way from A to C with everything related to fundraising, live Q&As, templates, agreements, a community of founders helping one another all over the world. And I think that you will find tremendous value in it. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching.